you have a good beat on the real estate market overall. Obviously, all those years at Zillow uh, and your, even your, what you're doing currently. What is your sense as to whether or not these taxes go into effect? They will have a real impact on on the market itself. Well, clearly, some people are moving from high tax states to low tax states, and the potential increase in capital gains rate federally and also income federally will accelerate that. Um, however, what's really driving the housing market right now is not actually tax policy. It's not the Biden proposal, and it's not even the state by state differences. It's limited inventory. So, if you think for a second, over the last four decades, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, about 26 million homes were built every decade. So, 40 years of 25 to 26 million homes built. In the 2010s, only 6 million homes were built in the United States. So there's a 20 million home gap of houses that just don't exist, which would have existed in past decades. That's why home prices are increasing so quickly. And tax policy, sure, it has a difference on the margins, but the real issue and what's really driving home value appreciation is limited inventory because of lack of new construction. Right. And that lack of new construction, of course, followed the housing bust, 08, 09. And we did not get anywhere near, as you say, uh, the levels that we were accustomed to. What are you seeing in terms of trends right now, uh, Spencer? We talk so often about people leaving high tax states. Perhaps that yeah. is one reason. Obviously, weather can be another. I mean, is this exodus for real? Do you expect it to go on? And what are you seeing in those markets such as Florida or Texas, where there seems to be a great deal of demand? Yeah, so people are untethered from their corporate headquarters, and that's causing a lot of people to, like, to want to move. And you know, just in, in my little world, I know probably half a dozen people that have moved from um, from California to Texas or from New York to Florida. I'm sure I'm sure you do too. Um, you know, so I'll give you some data to inform the conversation. If you think of Austin, Texas, for example, which is a major tech hub, Apple is expanding or creating a billion dollar campus there. Google, Facebook, Amazon, all have expanded their office space there. Austin home values are up 18 percent year over year, which is scorching. I mean, home values should go up two or three percent year over year. Salt Lake City, another tech hub, not frequently cited that way, but there are more engineering and, and graduate engineering degrees in Salt Lake City per capita than San Francisco, Denver, or Boston. And Salt Lake City home values are up 15% year over year. And you contrast that with San Francisco, for example, where home values are down 3% year over year. So clearly people are leaving San Francisco. Home values are going up very, very quickly in places like Austin, Salt Lake City, Texas, Dallas, Miami. Um, and, you know, some of that is, is tax driven, but a lot of it is also lifestyle driven. If you don't have to be in a particular city anymore, people are voting with their feet and they're choosing to move to different places. Hey Spencer, um, you know, you talk about uh, limited supply. Wells did a report a couple of weeks ago where they argue that we're just laying the foundation for this cycle. They say there's a long tail ahead, demand support for 2.3 million through the rest of the decade with supply consensus at one five. You think that's legit? Could we be talking about this for the next seven or eight years? Well, the problem is that just when we were starting to build houses, COVID happened and commodity prices have gone through the roof. I mean, the price of lumber now is about three to four X what it was a year ago. So, I mean, I'm talking to builders all across the country where they're abandoning projects and selling them to individuals instead of completing the projects because it's become so expensive for them to build because of commodity prices. So, you know, I, I, I hope that we are able to solve this inventory shortage through more new construction. What probably ends up happening, though, is first time home buyers decide to continue renting. Because remember, if you're an existing home buyer and you already own a home and you're selling and buying, you actually have appreciated equity that you can trade into the new home. If you're a first time home buyer, so you're a renter, you don't have that advantage. So the way this probably normalizes is a little bit with new construction, but also with first time home buyers deciding to continue to rent because they can't afford to make that leap to buy. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.